Welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing RuCode with Gemini 2.5. The reason for this is RuCode has just added error management for Gemini 2.5, meaning that if you're struggling to build applications completely for free using Gemini, RuCode might just be the best for you. Now this is going to be a completely unbiased review. I haven't actually tested this yet, but basically I'm going to be running this prompt here, which is my service uh, based website. You can find this prompt in the description of this, of this video. And yeah, we're just going to be running this and seeing how it goes. Now, if you are confused by anything in this video, then definitely check out the school. You can see I've got literally everything from how to set up Visual Studio Code to how to set up Klein and Roo Code to installing MCPs and all of that good stuff. So if you're feeling confused and you don't know how to do some of the things that I'm talking about in this video, First of all, everything is on YouTube for free. You can Google it, you can work it out. You don't have to pay for anything. But if you do want just a quick and easy kind of laid out everything for you, then please check out the first link in the description. Now, with that being said, let's just grab this prompt here and we're gonna go over to RuCode. You can see here, RuCode 3.11 released. RuCode 3.11 brings significant performance, fast edits, API key balance, project level MCP config, improved Gemini support, smarter retries, fixed escaping, added to Vertex provider. And then there are a load of other changes as well. So I've got this on architect like I always do. The first thing I always do is I create the project using MPX create next app. And then this one is gonna be called RuCode Rolls Royce. I'm gonna be making the Rolls Royce website again. For context, so you know what this kind of test looks like. This is what Claude Sonnet 3.7 basically one shot for me on the day that it was released. I think it has got a little bit stupider. I do agree with people that are saying that 3.7 is maybe losing some of its intelligence. This happens all the time when new models are released. It's like there's a, a, a dial, right, a lever. And if you turn it to the left, it increases the intelligence of the model. And if you turn it to the right, it decreases. Whether that, I don't know what it is exactly, this, this lever, but I think it's probably something like um, how many trillion uh, like training tokens are inside the model or something. I don't exactly know. I'm not an AI expert, but people do say, and the, this is pretty common knowledge, that when a model is first released, it's super intelligent, and then they slowly become stupider and stupider. So, so all I did was I just said, give me the command to make a Next.js project 14.2.23. I like to use a specific Next.js version. I do go through all of this in on the course, but it's just because this is uh, a version that is in the memory of these tools, right? So let's create the project, put it into a new folder. Once that's done, the only other thing we need to do is open um, Visual Studio Code and then put some images inside the uh, public. So the way this works is the prompt includes images, right? So we're gonna be looking at how intelligently Google Gemini 2.5 uses images. It's going to choose a font for us. So far, the only font that Google has ever chosen is Playwright. So we'll see if Google Gemini just is hard-coded to choose Playwright. We're going to look at the colors, the use of color, whether it's clashing. We're going to look at kind of the general structure of the website. Is the structure good or um, does it look bad or are there, are there any specific problems? And yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll go to File, Open Folder. We'll look, press R, look for... Rue code Rolls Royce, there we go, select folder. Yes, I trust, then we're just gonna add a new folder called public, and then inside that, a new folder called images. And then here's one I did earlier. Um, so I just need to go to the folder, just give me two seconds, folder, app, where is public, there we go. So these are just some images I found online about, uh, you know, to do with Rolls Royces, basically. Um, are these in the right folder? Yes, okay. So now we can go to RuCode. They've changed their logo, looks pretty cool. I like the change there, you've done a good job. Control A, Control C. I know that um, the lead developer of RuCode will be watching this video, um, so hello. Um, we've got this on Gemini. This isn't a sponsored video or anything, by the way. It's just, uh, he's been in contact with me because he said he, they've been trying to increase, they've been trying to improve the browser use. I just tried it doesn't seem to be improved massively, so maybe a few more things need to be done there, but let's press enter. I'm on architect mode. Um, I do highly recommend this process of plan, 
into act, right? I personally prefer Klein for this, um, just because of the way that it's set up. I don't like uh, that you have to change architect here. I don't think that makes much sense. Um, I think that uh, the plan act mode on Klein, it, it definitely seems better, but we'll see how this does. Um, we should. Oh, wait. Sorry, I'm inside Rue Code Rolls Royce. That's where my. So, yeah, I forgot to change the prompt. There's something here that says, um, yeah, it's here. So, just make sure you change this when you use this. So, it asks these follow up questions. I'm just going to say, um, Uh, I, I just need you to do everything, mate. I don't like it when it asks too many questions like this. Just please just, just get on with it. Like, I don't, I don't need to be asked this. Okay. This is looking a little bit better. This looks pretty good. Yep. Good. 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 This is a good plan. This is definitely on par with, uh, Anthropic 3.7. Um, we'll see how Rue code does compared to Klein here, but it looks, I mean, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. Looks like a good plan so far. Um, does it, did it give me colors and everything? No. Please give me the design and also look at the edge folder so you know what images you have to work with. I need like... I need colors and fonts and and everything. I want to see what it comes up with. So now it's reading the images so that it has some idea of what images it can use in the project. And then after this, it's literally just a case of me going to go get a coffee and then coming back and I have an entire website done. You can see this is kind of slow. It's, the main reason is, um, it, it's, it's uh, Google itself, right? It's Gemini's fault. So there it is, Playfair, not Playwright. It always uses Playfair. I might just tell it not to use Playfair. Nah, it's fine. So, how do I code? Okay, now make it. And it should just start making it. I should just be able to go AFK. First, I need to see the current content of next config.mjs. Okay. Okay, I like how it's doing this. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, so we'll just leave this for probably about 25 minutes. So I want to give a quick shout out to iteration prompting, and I just want to quickly explain what that is. Yeah, error specified, this cannot be used with this. Same thing here, you cannot use this with this, right? So for iteration prompting, what I like to do is I like to copy these errors and I just like to add it somewhere. So you can add it to the system code or you can just add it here. So like, I'll just add it here. So you can just say, be wary of these errors. Don't make these mistakes. And then just paste these errors, right? And then that's iteration prompting. So I'll just take my definition here just because I don't, I don't really know how to define this. So because we're not exactly programmers, one of the best ways to code is for us to use iteration prompting. What this means is effectively starting with a project using Klein or Rue code, whatever, and pushing it, pushing it to its limits using, you know, whatever method you want until it gives you basically what you want. But then you prompt out the common errors or things that went wrong the first time. So I know just from experience that this is an error that comes up a lot, right? The, these two errors, this is just from experience, right? So if you see the same errors coming up every single time, in order to save your kind of sanity, right? You need to, you need to add things that block against those mistakes, right? So that's iteration prompting. One thing as well that I do need to mention is this is actually really, really good now because I left this, you know, I, w I went to go and cook and stuff like, um, and then I came back and it was still going. So this update that they've done where they've 
improved the Gemini API is super, super good. So like they've built in this retry mechanism here, which this, this is exactly what I said that someone needed to do. I don't know if they got this idea from me or whether this is just obvious. I feel like this is just obvious for anyone that, you know, has this kind of brain. I do feel like I do have an engineering brain. I didn't study engineering. I'm not claiming to be an engineer or anything, but I do have something in my brain that really helps me look at a problem and know how to solve it. So a lot of times people just come to the same conclusions, right? And I think this is just an obvious conclusion was to make it so uh, Gemini would be retried when it fails because it was just failing too much, right? And it was just destroying the experience. So now you can much more easily, Klein needs to get on this as soon as possible. I'm probably going to use RuCode if I'm using Gemini, honestly, because um, at least in its current state, it just makes way more sense to use Ru, uh, RuCode. Okay, so, I mean, all that being said with RuCode, it is just, uh, sorry, with Gemini, it is just getting stuck here. So this is, this is annoying. So it's telling me to manually delete these pages, right? Okay, great. Really didn't want to have to do this. I'm just going to ask it to delete. Can you not delete them with commands? I'm on Windows git bash. So this should work. I don't know why this wouldn't work. Yeah, so that works. So now if we run npm run build, it should work, hopefully. Let's see if it can manage to do this, because if it can, this is now free. It's like you can do this all day long. Ah, still got the same problem. Okay, so that did eventually work. I just had to delete some, some, uh, some directories manually. There was something wrong with the permissions on Windows or something. That wouldn't really be necessary on most uh, systems. Let's see if I can actually open this thing. Okay, so we've got the... Uh, the home page there, classic. Let's see if, what happens if we go to slash yen, nothing. Okay. So there's still some errors here. This uh, doesn't work as well as Claude, honestly. But if you can just push through those little few errors that may pop up and you get to grips with working in the terminal, understanding errors, right? So just click around, do stuff, make shit happen, and then say things like, so, the home page is currently going to the vanilla, sorry, the boilerplate home page when I open the local host. Also, this error happens if I go to slash en. And to be honest with you, Gemini has made these errors every single time. So I suspect if you just create a list of all of these errors, right? So we, we already had those two before. And then I've seen these errors too every single time. And also where the home page doesn't properly work, right? So you just need to mention all of that in iteration prompting, right? So you need to say like, the home page should be automatically set to slash en and a language switcher to slash it make sure the home page when opening the project does not just simply show the boiler plate of next.js and then we'll just stick this error at the bottom here and then slowly but surely we can make our own sops or whatever to create these projects so quickly, so easily. Let's see what we've got now. Let's see if it's actually working. That looked like something happened. There we go. Bang. Look at that. <laughs> Damn, you just, if you just do that little bit of extra pushing, then you can really start to. And like, this is like without any prompts, like including, I mean, you could do like more animations. You could go crazy with this stuff, right? So yeah, I mean, this is, this is really good in terms of what it's created. I definitely think we could vibe code here and just be like, um, okay, so it's working now. Can we make this like super insanely cool and modern, uh, with amazing animations and more vertical 
um, blocks on each page and section to ensure a really beautiful set of landing pages with good conversion. Right, so this is just an example. I'm not saying I'm going to do this now or whatever, but once you get to the point where you can just Right, let, let, me, let me try and explain this because this is what I'm trying to... I've been trying to explain this to people for ages, but it's really hard to explain. Basically, you get an SOP. An SOP means a standard operating procedure, right? So you get an SOP that takes you to the point where you get something like this in a one-shot, right? This has got... If you look at this, what you've got here, you've got... Obviously, it stopped running. Oops. Just hang on, let me just uh, restart the server. Once you get to the point where you can get something like this, and it doesn't have to be Next.js, right? I'm not just saying just use Next.js. You can even do this with WordPress and stuff, I'm sure of it. I haven't worked it out yet. I'm on my way to working it out. But I'm pretty sure you can do this with WordPress too. I will say, in my experience, Next.js doesn't rank as well as I was expecting it to rank, to be honest with you. And WordPress, to be honest, might just be better. But once you get to the point where you can one-shot, a really nice looking project and then you can you know how to I hate the fucking word vibe code honestly I'm just gonna call it chaos code and then you chaos code to something unique and amazing right so each one of these adds value each time and then you can even do things like co-pilot content based on the website so far, right? So if you click load it, like, honestly, you can go really, really far with this. And then you could even have um, ChatGPT auto creating infographics for landing pages. Like, if you're watching this far into the video, I'm just giving you all, I'm just giving you a data dump on all of my ideas on what you could do with this. Now, my next thing is looking at WordPress. I want to know if you can use Klein to build WordPress websites. So expect that very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend. I really hope this helps. I really enjoy making content like this. This stuff is getting crazy now. This costs nothing. I didn't pay, I didn't pay anything for this. All right, peace out.